All right, welcome back. Well, um, yes, we're talking about the unfortunate attacks. Uh, and uh, we've got Mr. Fatai Owoshini joining us this morning. He's a special advisor on security matters to Oyo State Governor. He's a former commissioner of police. Uh, he's been in Lagos, in Benue State, amongst others. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today on the program. And uh, first of all, commiserations on this unfortunate incident. But there are several reports as to... Um, the casualty figures and accounts, so people still worry. So perhaps if you don't mind starting from that perspective, has that been, uh, can we place a finger on it now in terms of uh, the casualty figures so people know what, how to proceed? Uh, good morning, Chamberlain, and uh, thank you for, uh, for the condolence message. Um, I happened to uh, I've traveled with the Commissioner of Police to Igogo yesterday and um, from the camp and of course um, the corpses that we saw, um, 11 uh, persons uh, uh, of Igogo community, um, 11 casualties were recorded while um, five uh, of the bandits uh, were also eliminated. But I, I, I know that, um, do we have an idea, did you see this coming in the first place? Because several people have said, well, there might have been a hint or two from security agents, even though they had been speaking with everybody in the community, hoping that uh, this kind of thing doesn't happen. But is there any, can you tell us how things broke down, if at all it did? Yeah, you see, from um, all indications, uh, from what we saw at Grant, um, as to whether they do see it coming, um, uh, somehow um, we've been having intelligence that um, there is a likelihood of um, the fellow, um, the Seriki the Seriki family um, that was um, pursued out of that community to his own uh, place in Kuala State, um, that there is a likelihood of him, uh, uh, you know seeking help uh, from um, people that of uh, Fulani uh, had the courage um, to come and do a repressor. And um, there have been reports of uh, some of his uh, children also oh, saying that uh, they want to come back. So he's been talking with two sides of his mouth. Um, at a point in time, he even wrote uh, an appeal uh, pleading that um, the state should allow him to come back. Um, this information um, as we uh, as we received them, um, we shared with the security agencies and um, the locals. That is the traditional institutions and the uh, local government officials, and that informed the um, you know the concepts that the state um, had been putting up to get um, more of the um, non-state actors. Uh, to be integral part of um, our concept. And um, we've been working on that seriously. Uh, we've been asking everybody to be on the lookout. But as with every um, asymmetric warfare, um, a jungle war, um, people always take advantage. So what happened um, yesterday, uh, early in the morning, that, um, that was between around uh, 11, 10 p.m. up till about 3, 4 a.m. Um, was that um, these fellows took advantage of um, the darkness and um, enter the Gaga community um, to a place um, identified as uh, Asunara. So in such um, situation, you can't plan enough um, in asymmetric warfare. But um, I, apart from uh, you know, condoling with the families of um, those people that lost their lives. I also want to um, sincerely appreciate uh, the people in Igaga, that is the community, the non-state actors, um, the Excellency Governor Shei Martin, they appreciate them a lot um, because uh, for them to have quickly mobilized um, because they were caught on my way, um, a social party was ongoing. They were just trying up at the party when these guys, um, you, you, you know, struck. So for them to have uh, uh, taken the bull by the horn and fought back and were able to also eliminate uh, part of these fellows, 
um, that is uh, that was a very good. Uh, it was a good uh, attempt. Um, and while one of the reasons that we're concluding that it was a reprisal is that out of the five uh, of the bandits that were killed, two of them were positively identified to be children of um, the, that fellow, uh, the Sally, um, the, 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 that um, uh, has been, uh, you know, uh, removed from that place. While uh, one of them is the son of uh, um, Wakili, who is uh, presently in prison uh, on charges of uh, kidnapping and murder. So if you just, um, yes, it's not conclusive, but having those elements there that have been identified with um, the, the, the fellows that have been accused of so many things, uh, speak to the fact that um, it's a kind of repressor and um, it was um, also somehow uh, targeted. Uh, that, that's um, what I can read from what we saw at the Gagra yesterday. One of, one of the things that comes to my mind, uh, Mr. Oshini, is that, um, I mean, uh, you said that the information was well ahead of time, uh, which was shared with security agencies. I'm wondering if there is any way one could have also shared the same information, one way or another, with the members of the community as well, because uh, I'm, I'm wondering, was there anything we could have done to, uh, knowing that these things could happen, maybe you know, increase or uh, beef up uh, security in the area and as well perhaps maybe not to cause any kind of um, uh, 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 apprehension on the part of the people, but at least to prepare in the event that such things would happen so that we don't lose so many lives and property. Could that have been done? Uh, first, uh, first let, let me, maybe you did hear me when I was talking, um, we, we responded to Chamberlain's question that uh, when we started getting such information, even from the people in Kwara, where um, Sally um, um, originated from, they were also looking for a way to evict him from that place. So when we started getting the information, we had um, interactions with uh, the people within that taxes, okay, going by taxes, and the whole of Oyo State, um, but especially focused on the people within that area, the local government officials, and um, the same information was disseminated to the traditional rulers that uh, we have to be on the lookout, um, that when people see something, they should say something. But beside all that, when you talk of asymmetric warfare, um, what uh, they call uh, jungle warfare, you cannot prepare enough. And, um, you know, they will always take opportunity of uh, some gaps, like as it happened. Um, it was... Uh, some minutes uh, before midnight. Um, so even if you have all the structure, you will still have uh, that element of surprise. Uh, and of course, with a turn in a kind of joyous mood, like I said before, the party was ongoing through where uh, they came in from and um, somehow targeted as well. But I will still give it to um, uh, very good people in the, 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 the non-state actors the elders and the, the, the youth there, um, for them to have come out boldly and, uh, you know, uh, challenge that, somehow we tell, uh, pursue them, and uh, we're able to eliminate uh, part of them. Oh, so that is to say that uh, some kind of preparation uh, was on ground. And uh, what we, we just need to do in New York State, we've been emphasizing what we call integrated security architecture, integrated security concept. That is making the non state actors integral part of our architecture um, because there is a huge gap in terms of uh, personnel strength of um, the conventional security people. And the only way we can do that, uh, we, we can bridge the gap, is to get um, the non state actors involved. And um, we will only accelerate, um, you know, putting this structure on a, on a, on a sand. Um, footing the um, concept uh, an operational concept um, have been designed which will make um, the non-state actors who we operate under the voluntary policing um, uh, sector who we to, to have a seamless synergy a good working relationship with the conventional security well you'd also recall well uh, uh, you the, the fact that lives were lost 
is definitely something that concerns the Ohio State government, as you have said, and everyone is really concerned. So even though we can't, you know, prepare enough, loss of life is never something anything wants to record. Okay. I'm sure you would agree with that. But um, the question is against the backdrop of not just this event, but the fact that uh, the uh, chairman of Ohio State Security Network uh, also made that comment within the past a week or so that there are there is a likelihood of attacks and that most of the people well the likelihood is that there are going to be people who are not from nigeria uh, in particular and that is not the first time we're hearing that kind of thing is there any way that we can forestall a repeat you, you see um when you talk of security, you can't have total 100% uh, mark when it comes to security. And um, you mentioned the chairman of uh, Amotekun on your state had to come up with that. Um, I, I must tell you that there are ways that uh, intelligence reports are disseminated, which we've been doing in um, your state uh, because uh, we, we have um, the service commanders that we share this information. Even before then, um, I have mentioned that when we got the information, we got in the service commanders involved, we got in the local community involved, we've uh, put on ground a kind of um, structure, you know, the, the background to, um, you know, formally um, integrating the domestic factors into our security architecture we've um, because all these things uh, involve a lot of plans and uh, it's not everything you do about security that you want to um, roll out it's also not every intelligence report that you get you want to broadcast in a manner that will make people to be panicky um, i can assure you uh, that um, this yes from all indications appear targeted but um, you learn lessons from different things uh, that happened. I, I will still repeat it. The fact that uh, the Ganga community was able to come out and repair and succeeded in eliminating five of them, it's, it, that was an indication that um, some grand work uh, must have been made. So it's just a matter of, you know, strengthening that um, structure to, to make sure that uh, we, we, we are not uh, caught on our way. The focus here in New York State, uh, which His Excellency Governor Shei Makinde is pushing, is uh, let us put all structures in place that will make us to be proactive as much as possible. But no country in the world, nowhere in Nigeria, can you um, say you are winning asymmetric warfare 100 percent. There may be little, little um, gaps in there, uh, but as it happens, you it's, you do a lesson learned. You you know what are the things you've done that are best practices and you see how you can improve on the gaps that you have but i can assure you that um, we'll continue to improve on that our structure um you know accelerate um, in, 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 um, integrating um, strongly our non-state actors into the architecture um, that that will work you know at least three times now you have commended the people of Igongo for uh, rising yes. up to the occasion, as it were. And you've talked about collaboration. You just talked about that now. Uh, you say that this attack took place from about 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. the next day. That's about four yes. hours. Uh, the question for me first is, where was the police, or according to you, conventional security agencies? Where were they during this four-hour period? Look, you... Everybody... Yes, I was a policeman, but everybody thought, where were the police? If you list it very well, I've mentioned that there is a huge gap. How many policemen do you have in a place? Um, the, that has is because of the incident we've been having. We've been having reinforcement of the PMF. We've been having reinforcement of Amatekum and the Operation Boss, the, uh, the State Security Outfit. So when you are faced with uh, such a um, situation, and of course in the night, um, limited operations are carried out. So the little support that it can give to the people there uh, before enforcement came, um, you, you know, helped um, and assisted uh, in, you know, getting um, the, the, the enemy side, the 
that is for, uh, to, to get some of the, the enemy side um, eliminated. Um, you cannot, if anybody says you can have 100 over 100 in security, please forget it. That is utopia. You know, my question is quite specific. Uh, between that 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. window, did reinforcement from the police come? Yes. Um, people were moved from Aguare. That is the new mobile squadron. Um, from Aguare to that, this uh, would take um, like about uh, two hours. Um, they had some on guard before. Uh, what we have to recognize is that there is huge deficit when you talk of um, strength of the police. Even when you talk of uh, uh, the weapon with which, uh, uh, with which they will operate. And night operations, um, as far as the rule of engagement is concerned, is um, somehow always limited. That is the professional view. Were investigations and talks around this attack could happen without referring to what happened in January, the episode uh, with the uh, Serika Fulani, which you also referenced uh, and all that. Uh, and you say that people identified uh, some of the attackers as sons of uh, either uh, the Serki or Wakili. The question is, what happened then? Uh, how was it resolved or was it ever resolved really because if this is a reprisal then it clearly points to the fact that the episode we saw there was not quite resolved you um i, I won't uh, understand fully what you mean by resolved. um when i was talking i mentioned that uh, wakili is a uh, still awaiting trial is in prison custody with two of the other suspects on uh, charges of uh, um, murder and uh, kidnapping. Um, the other fellow who fled uh, from that place um, has been, you know, moving from one location to the other. And um, the investigation is still ongoing on that. Um, and you can be sure that uh, whichever way, uh, people will be brought to, to justice. So um, I know quite well that uh, the police, especially, that is charged with that responsibility. Um, they are doing their work, and um, um, hopefully, um, at the right time, the, the long, uh, uh, the, the long hand of justice uh, we will catch up with that fellow. But the other fellow is um, is, uh, in, in, uh, is on remand in, in the correctional service of responses to uh, this attack. We've also had some uh, from the opposition party in Oyo State. And let me just take something from what they, they said. In fact, for them, they're solely blaming the governor uh, for this lapse, which they realize. And they ask that for how long should Governor Shea Makinde continue pack, uh, passing the buck, rather? And the question they ask is, what is the essence of the monthly security vote which the governor collects if it could not be channeled towards securing the lives and property of the residents and indigent of your state. Now, this is the view of the opposition party in the state. How, how do you respond to that? Well, I don't want to join in any political uh, discussion. Um, it is unfortunate that um, that has been in this country. I, I want to know what the political class who, um, you know, politicize, ethnicize, uh, everything security uh, it's a sad uh, it's a sad uh, thing for us in the country to put issues uh, um, around uh, uh, you know political uh, thing um, before this is that happened um gonna had been you know a little bit calm um, for some months before we, we, we had this and uh, you, you know I'll leave politics to uh, politicians to talk. If that is uh, what their re reaction is going to be, let's what I say in this country. It's going to consume all of us. Anything security should not be, uh, you know, put in ethnic coloration, political coloration, or, or religious coloration. Um, security it is for all and um, whatever. But I, I don't want to be involved in uh, all those political. Uh, uh, you, you know, I, I don't want to use certain languages. Uh, all what I know is that, um, you know, your state, um, every effort has been uh, made uh, to ensure that uh, people are, you, you know, well secured, 
um, that uh, we, we improve on everything we, we are doing. And uh, everything is so simple that too. How do you really, um, you know, do a quick fix of the huge gap in, gap in strength, huge gap in uh, infrastructure? Um, I, I'm talking professionally now. How many policemen do you have in all the places, even where you have the policemen, including the military? Where are the weapons for them to work? And that is why we're having all this uh, collapse. So is that supposed to be politicized? So I, 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 I hope that uh, the political elite uh, will realize that and they will not uh, you, you know, put things in political perspective. You know, I know the governors are in the Southwest have spoken, saying that this is callous, this is premeditated, and that they will do what they can within the law to protect their citizens. But does this, uh, for you, do you think it further damages the confidence that people have in the police to do their job when they can or when they have to? Somebody, you, you know my position when it comes to discussing police. I'm passionate about the police. That's an institution where I sat for 25 years. We must sit down in Nigeria and um, you know decide whether we are ready to have a police. We are not ready to have a police in Nigeria. Take that place as an example. The divisional police uh, headquarters is located at Ayike. Ayike to Ibnagan is uh, like about 15, 20 minutes drive with a vast land. And you want a DPO to police that place with 30,000 Naira in three months. Who has bought weapons for the police over the years? Who has uh, recruited uh, people into the police for so many years? So the police is a victim of bad governance in this country. It's a, the, the police is a victim of the political elite. People will come and talk of answers and all those things. You create an institution and you continue to decimate that institution. This is not the police that some of us joined. So the, the guys are just struggling. The police are miracle workers. So everything that um, is said about the police is about all of us. A nation will have a police that it deserves. So we, we are not ready to have a, a police in Nigeria. You would say that police is bad, police is bad. You continue to decimate, to continue to create all sort of uh, proliferate security agencies. And you would do a joint tax force. You will form a joint tax force more than a whole institution. You will create a fraction out of the police. You will form them more than the whole institution. Please, um, you, you know, a person like me, when I talk to the police, it would invoke um, a, a, kind of a, a, a kind of passion. The country is not ready to have a police. The country don't want the police to perform. Nigeria is the most difficult country to police. So that, that is it. Well, I clearly understand, uh, you know, your passion, disappointment, and the way things are going. I mean, Nigerians equally feel, if not more, frustrated because they expect the authorities to know what to do and do the right things when it comes to policing. But it appears as though some people may be benefiting from the current structure, hence reasons why they don't see why they should do something about it. But just give us a moment. There's some other areas that we just need to clarify because we need to talk about solutions in terms of what to do, preventing this from happening again. But that will be when we return in a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, uh, Mr. Roshini, before, yeah, well, still in the uh, theme and of speaking about solutions to some of this, but I'd like to find out, does it make it more difficult for you advising the governor in terms of what to do, perhaps if the people feel disenchanted about the police, for instance? Uh, let me tell you, the, um, it, it's not about uh, anything, um, you know, your state. And of course, while I was in the service, most of the states that I worked, the governors are doing a whole lot. And here in your state, um, fantastic structure had been put up. 
uh, apart from vehicles being provided, um, the vehicles are being filled. The, the police and other security outfits in your state are also being given allowance by the governor. Um, when this uh, madness of uh, school kidnapping started, or your state is one of the states, yes, we may not make noise about it, where we've connected some of our schools, you, you know, using um, vulnerability uh, index uh, to, to, to select schools, but we had our schools um, uh, connected to the state security control room. So in New York State, from Ibadan, we can see some of the things that are happening in schools. And we have an alarm system that um, when things happen, they have any breach. Once they press the alarm, uh, you know, it will get to the police control room, the state security control room, um, the Amoteku uh, operation room, the operation boss operation room, the nearest DPO, and the school head. So it's a huge, a uh, lot of money that is spent on that. Uh, from Ibadan here, we can view some part of Ogumashaw, we can view some part of uh, your town. Even the uh, mobile squadron that was uh, established in Dagware, there's a whole lot of money that was used in setting it up. The, we, we have to um, commend uh, the, the governor, His Excellency Governor Shehima Kide. A whole lot of support has been given to the police, but the governor cannot recruit people into the police. Or your state as huge as it is, the vastness of the land with an international border um, it has probably not up to 3,000 policemen. What are we talking about? And do you want to hold the governor responsible for that? So it's, uh, it's something that, uh, you, you know, that is why sometimes, um, although some of us, are saying, no, it's not the state police that is the situation. But you can't but support some of the governors that are agitating for uh, for, for state police. So, and um, out of about 3,000 policemen that we, uh, that we police uh, or your state, majority have been deployed for one uh, uh, bag carrying jobs or the other, which the governor don't have control over. So it's... Uh, the political leadership that should, you know, cover their their face is shame. The police is derided. The police is used as caricature. But police, an average policeman, you know, bear the brunt of uh, uh, bad governance in this country. The average policeman bear the brunt of uh, the uh, incompetence of everyone. The police is made to suffer for everything just because. They don't have a voice. That is the only institution that don't have a voice in this country. If you they, they have sit down in negotiation of salaries before, that they will say, oh, if um, the police who probably does the, the biggest job in this country is paid more than the military, the military has a weapon that they can say, okay, maybe, yes, although who is no more fashionable. Um, the other arms of the public service, the doctors, whatever, they can go on strike. It's only in the police that I cannot say Fatai and Chamberlain we are complaining about something. That is mutiny. It's if you if you oppress a body, a body that without which nothing can happen, what are you going to have? Because you, you, you know, it's so sad and unfortunate that at every point in time, everybody will be talking of police. People are talking of Hensat. We are fooling ourselves. It's not about Hensat. Is thanks to bad governance. The, the police reflect the political leadership. The police reflect what it's, the country is all about. So if you deride the police, you are deriding yourself, for God's sake. So um, I have talked and talked about it, and it evokes passion in me. You cannot just oppress people. I, I mentioned something. Even as commissioner of police in Lagos State, I mentioned it that an average DPO is given 30,000 naira quarterly to police this area. Where channels is located is policed by Magodo Police Station. Imagine from Magodo to your, your office, and you are given that person 30,000 naira quarterly. The money for the first quarter may not be paid until the third quarter. And you continue to decimate that institution and fund 
you know, the, the, the infinitesimal units you are creating out of that institution, more than the whole institution. Where were people in those days, the glorious days of the police? Even at the, as of the early 80s, when we joined the police, we met a good police. You have rank and files now that are supposed to be given two pairs of uniform in a year. Those fellows have to go and buy from their salary. The average uh, policeman constable, the salary you give him is not even enough for him to commute from his house to the police station where he works. We see police and our political leaders, even at the National Assembly, they will deride the police that they are thinking. Why would they not think, for God's sake, you are a policeman is coming from Ota to come and work in uh, Ikeja every day. So when, because the, the, the salary is not enough for him to commute, when he leaves his family in Ota, uh, at Ota on Sunday, he will tell Madame, oh, I'll come back on Saturday. The police station where he works, it's not as if there is accommodation there. So every morning he wakes up, he looks for such water or one dirty water to clean his face, wear the same uniform. So you, you have already, you know, made the guy not to have any sense of dignity. It's not his making. And you are holding him responsible for everything. You cannot bring policemen from some of the civilized countries there. What will kill them is depression. I've cited example in Benue State. Despite all the supports that the governors are giving us, you go to some places, you will put them where you will not even put your dog. You will put them where there is um, no governance at all. Yes, they've been talking of, uh, we shouldn't be talking of ungoverned spaces. It's only the police you will leave at the middle of nowhere. Who does that? All the other institutions that they create, is there any of those institutions that do that? Who is on the road in the night? For God's sake, we should pity the police. They are miracle workers. Yeah, we, but, we but you know, at, at that... passing all these blames on the police. Yeah, I get your point. You know, additionally, there will be many who will be asking questions as to what happens to uh, DSS intelligence. Are they up to it? Did they share intelligence? What's happening to the military part as well? Did they have any hints that this was going to happen? You know, all of that. But I know that this next one, you know, may be up to the governor. But already, when this happened, the immediate thoughts that some people have is, well, since they came with about, what, 20, 50 bikes, who knows? The states may have to do something about commercial motorcycles. Is that going to be? Do we expect no any one, decision on no that? No one has been able to say this is the exact number of people that entered the ground. No one. I, I get that point, but I'm asking, since they came with motorcycles, mm. what happens? Do, do people expect the government to make a decision on that? For this, for the incident that happened, no one in Gaga told us that they came in bikes. Oh. They only said that they used the bush parts to enter. Then when you talk of bikes, a whole lot of people have been talking of why has the state not uh, ban uh, Okada operation or whatever. And uh, good enough, our governor will say, oh, everything we do in your state, we want it to be logical. We want to think, think through it. We want it to be scientific. If there is no demand, there will not be supply. You, you understand. If you don't organize your transportation system um, very well to get alternative for people, you cannot just wake up. And you have to remember that some of the people that ride these motorcycles, some of them are graduates. Because of limited opportunity, they take that as a business. Have you provided alternative jobs for them? So don't let us... Uh, some of the things that we theorize about in this country May God help us. We are, you, you know, it's, we, it's like we are moving towards, uh, I, I don't know what to call it. Everybody will say, oh, ban bikes. But the state is saying, look, you can organize them. There are some countries, go to Beijing. They have an Okada uh, um, link that, that they perform. Here, the state is embarking on capturing them biometrically so that you can link an average Okada man to a family, you also educate them um, on how not to be bad. While I was in Lagos, in Napapa, I was using some of the back riders to check uh, bank robberies because the hand robbers don't know that I have some of those Okada riders who 
are stationed around by uh, the banks. When people come out of the bank, the ones that you follow to go and snatch uh, uh, money from them. It's not just about saying, oh, ban this, ban that, when you have not provided alternatives. Um, alternatives in terms of job, alternatives in, uh, in terms of uh, 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 transportation. So what are we talking about? Everything that is done in your state is done based on logic, um, science, and uh, of course, uh, looking through it to see um, what benefit do you take, uh, do you initiate a policy to cause multiple, uh, uh, you, you know, some other uh, multiple incidents. So you don't want to do that. And uh, it's not just about uh, opposition says, oh, why well, are they not banned by, by or, or whatever. Well, so you know, I, I was patronizing them. Yeah, I actually did say if uh, the people should expect a decision on motor uh, cycles, no, uh, not necessarily banning it because there are several other things that can be done about it. For instance, I mean, we know that uh, they're not, I mean, no, the law you, you know, clearly let says me, they can't apply. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you this. Even in Lagos, when we, we said, oh, don't apply certain rules, some people will Always. be going to the airport go against traffic. And, they'll be, <laughs> and they'll be held in traffic. And the next thing they are looking for is a bike rider. So when you ban them, people will still operate underneath. Some people said, okay, restrict the time of operation. Um, the sexualist just about a week ago in the media chat said, uh, people said, oh, stop uh, Okada operation between uh, maybe from 8 p.m. or whatever. And he took himself to certain locations in Ibadan. And now counted the number of Okada operating within that hour. You find out that at that hour is even a limited number of them that operate. Where you have um, a, a good structure put in place, enforcement and everything, you, you, you say you ban them now, you are creating an opportunity for corruption for some people. Because if you're banning, you must also have a record. How many do you prosecute? And you are also talking of a country where things don't work together. The criminal justice administration, how many of you are going to take to, to court when even uh, the courts are, are not sitting? How many people can the correctional facilities take if they cannot pay their fine? So when we talk about this, that is why a sexuality governor, Shehima Kinde, we always say anything you want to do, everything you want to do, make it logical. Where they are banned them, are they really, it, it, is the ban, has it been effective 100%? So those are the questions that we should be asking ourselves. But I can tell you, the state is working assiduously, uh, making effort to ensure that we capture the back riders, um, you know, biometrically, that we educate them, organize the way they, they operate. One of the things that was done was you learn lesson from other countries. The, the, the Sexlancy brought um, a, a, a model policy from Rwanda, which we've seen. Oh, how can we work through it? But basically, um, once you ban them, you are also going to create um, a crime problem uh, for the state. Because graduates that don't have work that has gone to, to ride or other. The world tells you what him to do. Um, people that uh, are going to work, find out you know, some of your staff, these are kind of that they ride to the office now. So what are we talking about? So if there is no uh, demand, there will not be supply. So let, 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 let us not fool ourselves at all. Most certainly issues are there. Mm -hmm. Well, whatever the decision is, I guess one would just wait. You have already indicated, hinted at one. But on that same issue, you would remember that General Togun retired had also said that some of the bike riders um, usually gather information to use to foment trouble. I uh, said so they use the, the bikes to, to study the topography, get information, and all of that in order to foment some of these troubles. I, I want to believe that that is also part of the consideration. So while waiting for government to do the needful that you have uh, hinted at, what do we do in the interim to ensure that these things do not get out of hand with some of the Okada riders who you know sometimes you know, use it to form in trouble? What, what, what we need to do, um, apart from getting alternatives, is to have you, you know, institutions 
that are sunk, enforcement institutions, um, starting from the police, uh, the federal road safety, and some of the states uh, created uh, traffic management agencies. When you have strong institutions, and of course, you go to the judiciary as well, when you have strong institutions, you'll be able to enforce. I can take a bet on it. Um, maybe just one or two other countries will probably be at par with Nigeria when it comes to enforcement. Even the elite, some of us that speak a whole lot of grammar, we are the people. Look at uh, the, the most of the GRAs. They have cooks, they have uh, mates, they have gardeners that are coming to work. It's the big men that are saying ban, uh, ban Okadas, that their cooks are coming to work and they will ride Okada uh, to, to work. So they are the same people that will say ban them. They are the same people that will come and say, oh, how will my cook come to work and all, all, all those things. Um, once you think through it, like um, uh, the governor of your state is doing now, we, uh, I've mentioned that before, that we are working strongly to make sure that we organize that system um, in a manner that uh, we not, you, you know, that they will not use them for purposes uh, uh, that are criminal in, in nature. And, well, Mr. Washington, um, it, let's... Uh, pardon me, let's try to wind down on this. So we, we have a town yeah. that has just been attacked. Uh, people were killed. Mm. Uh, I believe a lot of people are still mourning strongly right now. It's still fresh in their memories. And a lot of thoughts, a lot of conversations, some of them you may have heard, regarding what to do next, how to ensure this doesn't happen again. Some are talking about self-help. I know the governor has spoken about that and tried to tell people to keep it calm. But you know these things are out there because people think, why would this happen? We don't deserve to go through this, especially also because they sense that it might happen again. So what would be closure for these people and how soon will they be, be able to get closure? We don't deserve to even lose one life to insecurity in your state or in any part of the country. It is also utopian to say that you have a crime-free society um, with all sense of uh, modesty. For your state, still remains one of the states that is most, that is relatively peaceful when you compare the state with some other countries, even with states in the Southwest. So, um, like I mentioned before, when things happen like this, um, you sit down with strategize. Um, and of course, the states, the focus of the state with the security task force and the war room that was created by the executive council, which the Excellency Governor Shehima Kandichi, is to ensure that we work, we do a robust work on, um, on proactive measures. We don't want to be reactive. Um, we are doing it. Um, what has happened um, in Uganda would also you know, spur us to more action to um, accelerate what we are doing. As uh, I talk to you, the structure has been put in place on how to get the non-state actors fully integrated in our security architecture. Or your state is probably one of the first states that says um, our architecture is now changed to integrated security concept, where the non-state actors um, are made to work um, closely in support of the conventional security without any rancor, because that has always been the problem. To also make the non-state actors to work together, because the non-state actors are not working together. To get our traditional rulers uh, you, you know, involved for a very long time, um, traditional rulers in your state have not met together. But we had it just recently, and it is for the purpose of security. And because our traditional fathers also recognize that security is very important. They dropped all whatever misgivings that they have it. For almost uh, five, six, eight years, no governor had called traditional rulers together in, in New York State. And uh, His, His Excellency Governor Shehima Kede has done that uh, for the purpose of security. We've been bringing our non-state actors together to say, oh, you have different factions of OPC. You have a Soludera, you have a Gekoya. All of you will work together for a common purpose and for the conventional security to also recognize the fact that with police with operation uh, boss with 
and Macheco, that there is no rivalry and we are getting the agencies to you know to work together more than they've been working together and uh, i believe that um, yes i i don't want to sound uh, somehow um i think what has happened in Gaga will make us to put more effort and quickly you know put this structure and operationalize this structure once you operationalize the structure the local community they know the nooks and crannies of their communities. They know how to navigate the place. They are very, they are essential. And uh, we continue to count on the support of our people um, that all of us will join together and overcome this. But your state remains one of the uh, states in this country that you can see when you're talking of security, um, we, we rank as one of the states that take security as very important. We're hoping that uh, the governors will be able to compare notes so that other states perhaps may need to borrow a leaf from each other and shore up the security architecture in different states. But we do thank you for coming on today, Mr. Fatai so a Special Advisor on Security Matters to Oyo State Governor. Well, back in a moment. It's Twitter next.